this in just a second. Welcome. No. <laughs> I was once introduced at a conference and I was doing a keynote for a conference in New Orleans. And I'm in the front row and I'm sitting there and I get, they get this thing and they put a big picture up and it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy goes on and on. Well, so, Bill, you know, and he goes, I'm getting the whole thing. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, it's not me. <laughs> he does the whole thing. He finally goes, so, you know, everyone's big, big New Orleans welcome for. And he looks at me and I was like, dude, I am not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I get to like walk up on stage, this big picture behind and this other person. Say, well, uh, funny story. And so um, <laughs> they stayed, which was the important part. So, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Right. Are you well? Yes. I am spectacular. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, love it here, my second year. Spent the first uh, 50 plus in upstate New York. So I love it here. I just love this part of the world. Uh, it is wonderful to be in your area, and, and I'm honored to be invited tonight, folks. I'm so excited about the conversation we're going to have, and I want it to be such. So please, friends, as we get into this, um, let's have it. This is uh, it's my 35th year in education. I'm looking around the room. Some of you were not alive when I started my <laughs> journey into this <laughs> profession. Uh, but i got to tell you, folks, and it's, it is the last uh, 10 for me have been probably the most rewarding I've been in in the 35 and at the same time the most challenging. It is an interesting time to do what we do. Uh, so many amazing technologies, so many amazing methodologies, so many amazing, our students uh, that we train are in, a, are in an amazing place uh, in the world right now with what they have at their fingertips. My mom taught uh, elementary school for 36 years and she said, you know, I would kill to be like you now. You know, I have cray paper and blackboard. Uh, uh, blackboard, young people. That was a, we used to hang, <laughs> we hung slate on a wall and, and rubbed a rock against it to write. <laughs> Interesting time. <laughs> but you guys, it's like, you know, it, 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 what we have now is just, is just stunning, right? So, so, so with so much, uh, it gets harder than gray paper and blackboards, right? So I'm here to talk about this darn math problem you may have heard about in your travels. And uh, my challenge of the last 10 years of trying to conquer it, and that's probably wrong word, trying to do it well. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a remarkable movement in our, in our space, very different than what I came into when I joined this group in this industry. Um, but I wanted to sort of share the journey to doing it the best we can. Sound okay? Mm -hmm. um, Chief Learning Evangelist, got that preacher thing working, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, um, but been at this for quite a long time. I have a company, Apply Synergies, uh, based out of Utah, actually. I live uh, here in Charlotte. We have organizations design, develop, and uh, implement 72010 stuff. So that's kind of what we're about. And you're hearing a lot about my dear partner, Dr. Henry Gopperson, uh, who's a big part of, of our company, our methodology. Wrote that book a while ago, Top Left Corner. It's a great book. Buy it. I was for kids out of college. Kind of. Get through. So uh, I'm going to talk a lot about that today. So um, friends, I want to help you here. Um, about 10 years ago when I started doing this, and, I, and, I, and about the slides, that, uh, all my slides are not in there because I didn't want to kill too many trees. And so some of my interactive slides or activities and stuff I didn't put in there. All the main stuff is, if you want the entire deck, uh, bob at applysynergies.com, and I will uh, mail it to you. You're welcome to have the whole thing in you. And I will mail you the deck, not a PDF. If you want to use parts or pieces, by all means, please do. All I ask is that you source the slides, if you do. But please, by all means, uh, use those. But guys, about 10 years ago, you know a guy named Elliot Maisie? You ever heard of Elliot? A uh, dear friend of mine. I was doing a, 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 a two-day version of this workshop at his place on uh, what we call at the time performance support, which we'll get into in just a bit. And we're going around the room. There's about 17 people in the room. I get to about the third person, and she goes, you know, I am so excited about this workshop. I've been wanting to get better at this, but what I'm more excited about, Bob, is that obviously, if this is a workshop on performance support, 72010, I can't wait to find out what you have made for us that we can use for performance support when we leave this workshop. And I turned to my partner, who I was co-teaching with, and went, that probably would have been a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Considering this is a workshop on performance support. And that night, what I'm going to invite you to was born. I went home that evening and jumped on a technology called Ning, if you've ever heard of it before. And created what is now known as the performance support community. 
started out with that, that small class of what we thought were 20 something out of us. We wanted to have a way to get together after. It is now over 4,700 members worldwide. Uh, it just grows. We don't know how people find us. I signed 10 more people in this morning, uh, three of them from Germany and a couple from China. So somehow it's out there. But the whole idea, friends, is if you want to talk a lot more about this, if you want white papers, wikis, blogs, we do monthly free webinars. It is for free, it's not, you don't pay. Um, we just want a way to, to, to talk as an industry about this because this is hard in many ways. And so there's some wonderful folks up there. If you want to join, Chris at, at fivehomesandme.com and she will be sure to sign you on and you can get all the information and stuff you want. All right? So here's my agenda, folks. Why should you care? I've learned about you people, us in L&D, that we are a tough group. We are proud about what we do. We are, we, we, many of us have do this for a long time. Change is not one of our favorite things, I have found. People often ask me, when you go into organizations to do this, what is your hardest stakeholder to win over? Anyone want to guess who that might be? Mm -hmm. Who? The L&D folks. folks, exactly. Yeah. Who typically are the people who invited me in by, by the way. <laughs> My gosh, so I, you guys, I get it, I get it. I've been at this 35 years. I, I, am, I am wedded to Addie, too. You know Addie, if you're the, all right. Love it. Right? So, so I, I got a master's degree. I spent a lot of time trying to get good at this. I work really hard at it. So I, I get that change is not a simple thing. So first and foremost, I want you to think it's worth it. Why, why now, when we live in the world we do, should we as L&D folks really, really want to invest time in this? Because it will take, it will take that. Right? Then we'll get into how do you cover the 90? We'll talk about the math in a moment, uh, which is, I think, the harder part. How do you design then for all of it? Because uh, I think sometimes you guys in the, in the math formula, the 70 gets an awful lot of credit, if you, we talk about the math in a moment. Um, and we kind of forget the 10 a bit, or we, or we dismiss the 10, or we think that because it's 10, it's not good or big or powerful because 70 is 70. It's not the point, not the case at all. It's an integral part of the whole thing. So we'll talk a bit about how you kind of put it all together, and then of course we're gonna hopefully discuss throughout the whole deal. All right, still wanna stay? by the door, so we'll <laughs> All right, friends, so do this for me, would you please? Let's, let's start here. What is 70, 20, 10? Let's get that out of the, out of the shoot right away. Who can tell me what it is? Eric. It's, it's the idea that 70% of the time you will learn sort of on the job in place. 20% you can learn from others. Yep. And 10% of the time you think of it as more formal learning where you go. Bingo. Got it? Everyone hear all that? Yeah. yeah. So 70, you're on your own. In the workflow, 20 you typically still are, but you're bothering others, <laughs> yeah. right? And then the 10 where we're fortunate enough to do this for an hour to an hour and a half, right? You guys, do you agree with the math? No, not necessarily. What do, you, what do you think here? I don't know. Do you think that the majority of the stuff we've learned, we've learned on our own through trial and error and practice in your life? Or have you been formally trained on stuff? I think there's a rule of thumb. Whether I stake my career on the numbers, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> but, the, but the rule of thumb, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So minus 20 on each. Yeah, have you ever, have you ever, like, have you ever tried to look up the research? Or the, or the, there's none. There is none. Uh, to, to there is none. It came from the Center of Excellence and uh, a bunch of wonderful folks. And I, Charles Jennings, if you heard of the man, I love the guy. Um, but there really is no, he could burst the bubble, almost like, Here's another one, learning styles, don't get mad at me. <laughs> but there's little research to support that though, that actually works or exists. But I think, guys, here's the thing. 702010 is out there, it ain't coming back. I mean, it is, and, and I do agree in principle with the numbers. I think that the majority of the time, we were at, we're at it on our own. Sometimes we're fortunate enough to have a peer or mentor or coach that knows the stuff that I can bother and get them away from their jobs to help me. And very rarely, I think, if you talk to most corporate folks, <clears throat> Folks, 10% is one in 10 days. I, don't, I think many corporate folks would argue they don't get that much in training. One in 10 days. It's a lot of training, right? So I think the 10 may even be tinier than that, right? So, so I, I, I align with the math, but let's talk amongst the friends here. What, what do you, how does it sit with you? What, what, what challenges, successes, questions? Have you tried doing it? What, what about it? I feel like there's a lot of informal learning that isn't recognized as learning. Good you know, for you. So it's almost like learning doesn't get full credit because it just becomes part of 
part of what we do during our daily activities. Good for you. Love that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, one of the first things, I'm going to give you a bunch of homework tonight, if you don't mind, but one of the things I, I recommend you do is do what I call learning asset analysis. What I mean by that, folks, is go back to the companies you support and walk around and look at how people learn. Don't go to your LMSs, your LCMSs, your CMSs, all the messes you've made. Don't go to any of those things. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about our tools to trade. I'm talking about things that people use in the 90, just to use the math for now. Right? Because they are, guys, people are learning every day. Do you agree? I mean, people learn innately every day, unless they're not breathing. Other than that, they're doing their best they can, right? So, so I would challenge you, because I, I finally did it myself about 10 years ago with a company I was supporting at the time, and I just walked the halls and saw what they used to learn. You will be astonished at the miraculous things that they have created on their own. Amazing PowerPoints, incredible PDFs, groundbreaking job aids. Bill, everyone loves Bill. Bill is the guy. He knows more about stuff than the company knows about stuff. And everyone bothers Bill all the time. He's an amazing asset in that organization. He's a learning asset, right? So I love, to, I love the point. I think, I think there's so much out there for us to harness as learning assets that we have been too myopic to focus on what we always term as learning or training assets. What else about it, guys? What else? Young man. Thank you for saying young man. <laughs> I'd like you even more. Yeah. <laughs> David, thank you. What's up? Um, Go ahead. Oftentimes, there's too many, there's too many variables mm -hmm. in a situation. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're going to train a barista at Starbucks. Yep. You might have the best training, but what happens when that happens? God bless you. What yeah. happens when that happens? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So oftentimes, it's Guido in the back that says, you do this. Yep. Right? The trainer had no idea. Yep. Love so that. So I, 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 you know, training is... Love that. It's not a static process. <laughs> it's correct. So I would imagine there's so many variables that come into play that on the job training is where it happens. And you guys, nor is it linear. It's never been linear. Yeah, there are things people do in order. But to your point, my friend, when a barista walks into the... They were trained how to be one, right? Eight to five. But with 9.05, something that happens at 8 happens. And then at 4.45, something that happened at 3 happens. Right? The context of the workflow. Let me challenge you with homework number two. And some of you want to broke down the first one. That was one. You're a great group. When I started doing this seriously 10 years ago, here was another thing that hit. Besides not, besides not having an understanding of true, what a learner would call learning assets, that, and it's different than how we define them, dramatically when you, when you start shopping around. You'll be amazed at what you'll find. Here's the other thing I didn't realize. I had no clue about context. Context. I knew tons about content. I knew Eddie. I could do a task analysis. I could do all these things that I had been trained to do as a, as, a, as, a, as a formal ID. But what I realized, friends, is that pivots on content, not context, a lot of times. Smeej, you know what that stands for? God bless them. So matter experts, right? They're all laughing. We all love them for a lot of reasons, right? So matter experts, you guys, are lousy in a workflow analysis exercise. Lousy in a workflow analysis exercise. Not a content needs analysis exercise. Because the SME knows what? Everything. Everything. Perfectly said. Just ask them. They'll tell you. Right? They know everything. What they don't know and, and have a really poor perspective on is what? Thank you. How to be those who are not them become them. That makes sense? You guys, we've been doing this to them for years. We get a SME in the room who knows everything about software, leadership, conflict management, how to sell products, and they spew at us for three days while we fill whiteboards. And we make these amazing three, four, five, six, eight, ten day courses of this stuff that is completely out of context of that barista's life. And then they come in there and they try to have this, they have this Herculean thing of taking content to a contextual workflow. And here's the problem, folks. Most adults can't do it. They struggle terribly with it. Right? It's really, really hard. So you guys, 7 20, 10, here's where you go. We have to learn how to design for that environment. And that's what clients can be about. I'm gonna give you a look into, not train you. I'm gonna be very careful. You guys have an I have uh, what, an hour ten left. I'm not training you. Can I be clear about that? This is a presentation and a dialogue and that kind of stuff. If this was training, we'd be doing this very differently. Is that fair? 
So, so, so I want. So today, I hope you take a lot of notes, get some stuff down. Um, but the learning comes after. So I want you to leave with some fundamental principles around what this means. And here's the big thing, you guys. When I first saw 702010, I was sitting in an auditorium with a bunch of military people around me. There was this very important general up in front. I'm there on contract, sitting next to the learning leader. And his second slide, his second slide has 702010 on it. This is the general guy. Not a learning guy, general guy. And he says, in five years, this organization will be a 702010 organization. And I heard an audible gasp from the person sitting next to me, <laughs> which was a look, because what's he thinking? How, how do I do that? I mean, the guy next to me is the learning guy. He's the CLO of this large organization, right? And so when that guy makes that statement from the podium, he is talking about that guy next to me, and his marching orders literally are make it so. And he looked at me and said, Bob, here's what terrifies me. I don't know how to do that. I get it. I get the math. I can build 10 stuff. Tons of it. I, I can play with 20 stuff. Collaboration, you know, group thing. But that 70 thing, that, that unknown thing, that all that stuff that's out there, I have never ever tried to wrangle that down into a structure of, of learning effort. Does that make sense? Right. So today we're going to go at that. Do something at your table for a second, would you? See this slide? I want you to talk to your neighbors around you. Say hello if you haven't yet. I want you to pick two of the most effective learning things you've ever used to accomplish the things, the, your greatest learning challenges to learn, remember, and apply in your life. See the numbers? Pick two. I want you, I want you to pick two numbers. And by the way, there's a nine. It says other. If it's not up there, YouTube wins a lot nowadays, by the way, sometimes. This is a five-year-old slide. I'll share the data in a minute. Ready? I'll give you one minute. Talk about and pick two numbers. Go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, you ready? Wrap up. You all ready? Give me a number, folks. Get one up. Eight. Eight. Raise your hand if you're, if you're taking And I also, by the way, just because this also comes up, eight and three are often very popular because mentoring and coaching sometimes gets switched or means the other, or so let's do both. Eight and three, raise your hand if they were discussed at your table. Eight and three, look around. Another number. Four. Who said four? Raise your hand if four was discussed at your table. On the job. Another one. Six. Six. Raise your hand if six was discussed at your table. Look around. Brilliant. How about another one? Seven. Seven. Nice. Mobile. Yeah. How many get into your phones? Google? Have you heard of Google? <laughs> no? Cool things. I got in because of the GPS, thank God, because 77 was bad. My friend is coming from Fort Mill. That's where I live. Holy yeah. cow. The city has a lot of traffic. Yeah. Compared to Rochester, New York. Yeah. Right? But that's a little learning thing for me. Right? <coughs> Mobile, right? Any others? <laughs> Bob, Bob, I got nine. Nine? What'd you have? No. What was it? So it was uh, making a game. Gamification. Yeah, yeah, it would, yeah. Sometimes we hear, like I said, sometimes we get YouTube here, right? Very popular now. Fixed my sink the other day using it. A little tablet on the floor. Kind of works. Um, right? Folks, here's the thing. Let's discuss this a bit then, right? I have done this slide for five years. 
Five years I've used this slide when I do this presentation. Five years. Thousands of you from across the world. Two weeks ago I was in the Netherlands and Germany doing 10 master classes across those two countries. I used this slide as the second one in that slide too. Right? I asked safety. Here are the results of thousands of you answering. This almost always is number one. Now, by the way, I didn't, do, I didn't touch the slide until you all voted, right? This is typically number two. These are a close third. And then, like you said, folks, people will throw in the other ones. And here's the scary thing, folks. These never win. Never win, ever. You, they didn't get a vote in this room. I did this recently in another company nearby. It didn't get a vote in that room either. I did it in Germany and the Netherlands. It didn't even vote in those two countries. I did it with eight-year-olds once. <laughs> eight-year-olds. I had to change on the job training. They had no idea what that meant. It was something else. But you guys, here's the thing. They voted for the exact same things you did at eight years old. Ten. Ninety. Right? So guys, here's the thing. You just said, I didn't ask you as IDs, or in circle designers, or based on your curriculum. Or, I didn't ask you those questions. I said, as a learner in your life, and I listened in on the conversations, heard them thousands of times, you voted unanimously for the blue. But folks, we are known, spend every day, get paid to make red stuff. A lot. A lot. So forget 7.2010. Let's not argue the facts, the data. I get that. Well, here I want to argue is you are being pretty hypocritical, my friend. <laughs> That's what you're saying. <laughs> right? You're saying that when you've had to learn the most challenging things in your life. And by the way, one person said, well, Bob, if you took a ply off the end, I would have voted for the red stuff. Think about that one for just a second. That's okay. What business are we in, friends? <laughs> really? Really? Are we in the learn and remember business? <laughs> no! No! <laughs> No, there's not a person in this room who would pay for that. Nobody walks in your office and goes, I'm going to remember today. <laughs> no. Right? We get paid to impact and improve performance. People can apply. If they can't, stop doing what you're doing. You're expensive, you take too long, and you're getting in the way. I got to understand, this, this is a conversation I think we have to have in this room amongst friends. We've got to get in the blue business, friends. We've got to get in the blue business. We've got to learn how to build this stuff systemically, any like all that kind of stuff. If we want to be seen differently, we have to start building something different. So, to get to the blue stuff, you ever get this question, someone walks in your office and says this, I would like five days of training. <laughs> Has anyone ever walked in your office and said those words? I would like three e-learning. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is. It is a problem, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever has, I guess I do not walk into my doctor and say these words. I would like nine Advil. <laughs> uh, Camaram hurts. No, I would never do that. I would never, ever, ever do that. Right? I'm not the doctor. I'm the patient. I have the problem that I want hopefully solved. Right? But, you guys, this is the world we live in all the time. So here's homework assignment number three. If you want people to stop asking you for blue shirts, right, make red pants. Right? I, I get this one all the time. Bob, oh, if we could only get a seat at the table. Oh, I hate that one. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm, we're order takers. God, we're just order takers here. If I could only get, listen to you. Stop whining, first of all. <laughs> and secondly, you are in the training business, people. That is what you do. You train behavior. Have you ever thought about that? This is what we do. We train behavior, and we're whining because people don't treat us the way we want them to. <laughs> you ever thought about that? If we we got to change this thing, folks. We've got to get something because here's what you created. Look at this slide. This was an, uh, an assignment I was called into a year and a half ago in, in the U.S. military. Can't tell you about the class because people died if they failed it. That's, that's about all you can know. Right? But this is training, right? The structure, this was a five-day course that they wanted fixed because they felt it was broken. You'll see why in just a moment. See these five things over here? Right? Kind of elements of instruction, if you think about it. Good class probably possesses the five of those, maybe a couple others, right? If you're a learner, what's your favorite? Do it. Do it. I love to how yeah, let's do it. Practice. Show me how. Model. What else sometimes wins? 
discuss it yet? Can you yet? Maybe review if I can get feedback for you. Go back and try that type of stuff, right? What did you rarely ever win from learners? Really? They get it. Part of what we do. Look at this course. That's a lot. Watched it taught twice. Look at the math. We did the math. You had to do 33 slides an hour. A slide every 1.8 minutes. The average slide had 14 bullets on it. Oh and when I say bullets, it's not a metaphor I'm using there. I mean, I mean, folks, literally, people left this course terrified because of where they went after it. And, what, and the workflow they went into to perform in that they felt anything but equipped to, nothing else but terrified. Right? But here's the problem, folks. Imagine how those numbers broke down. I watched the course taught twice. Neither instructor was past 500 slides by the end of Wednesday. 500 slides, half, by the end of Wednesday. They have 500 to go in two days. Both instructors finished that course. All 1,000 slides. Think about the hell those learners were in for two days. I mean, I mean that literally. Right? Especially if you could see the content. If you could have heard the content, friends. I was scared, and I wasn't going anywhere. Right? So, I guess this is what happened. Another thing that's cool to do. Work assignment number one. Four, one, four, three. Sit in the back of your classes with this rubric. Sit in the back of your classes with this rubric. Because you need to understand what you're doing to folks. You really do. Right? Sit in the back of that rubric and every five minutes put a check mark. That's all you want to do. Watch any of your courses that you teach. Sit in the back of the room. Don't even worry about the content. Just watch what's happening. Watch the dynamic in the room. And every five minutes, put a check mark next to what you see going on. You'll be terrified by the numbers. Especially based on what you said you'd love if you were a learner in that room. Right? But I get it, you guys. That one, it had to. 1,000 slides, five days. Scary, deadly content. we got to get through the stuff because here it comes. It's got to get covered. Hate those words. Two star general wanted this course changed. But what did he want? Everything covered. And he knew the course was terrible. He knew the course was literally deadly. But what he didn't want, he said to me, he said, Look, I can't sleep at night, though, if you skip stuff. If, if, see what he's saying? So he said, he, he said, Look, I get the world I'm in because I get what we're doing. I, I, I feel terrible what we do to these people. I get it. But I can't lie in bed knowing you skip chapter five. Chapter 5 is scary, important stuff. Make sense? So we had to figure out, guys, how... He said, look, if you can figure out how this can happen without putting them through that, I will do that. But until you convince me that it gets covered, somehow, somewhere, it's getting covered where? In the class. We're doing those slides. We're going to put them through it. That make sense? All right? Guys, we do this all the time. It's not life or death. But this is the nature of the beast. So how do we solve this? First of all, we understand the journey better. Right? Learners go through three things. they got to master stuff. I get it. We train them up. You like that word? Skill up, level up. It's very popular now. Right? We train them up from something to something. Right? But here's the question, friends. Is that enough? Never been enough. All right, 70, 20, 10 aside, it's never been enough. Because what do they have to do? They have to become competent with that stuff. Right? And if you don't help them, what happens, friends? We all know. You've seen the research. Right? The classic forgetful curve. Right? This happens without any help. See the question mark. They are trying to apply, but enforcing on their own. Now, books. Who remembers books? Raise your hand if you remember books. <laughs> younger people. We used to bind paper between two covers. <laughs> It's a doorstop. I love that, Andrew. Because here, here's, here's what works fine. I'm fine. Do this next time, too. When I, my, my buddy and I are hired into a company, we wind up the halls, do the things I've told you about, and we do what we call the binder test. Binders. You like, you like binders? Oh, we love binders. Right? We give them out all the time. People take one. Right? When people come into class. God forbid you walk in and we're hands off. You'd be mad at me. Where's the binder box? How do I get the slides? Right, all this mm, stuff built up. So do this. Go to your companies, take your hand, go to binders, and rub your hand across the top of the binder. <laughs> guess what you have? <laughs> guess what you will find? Dust, because guess what? They haven't touched it since the course. 
even though in the course, marked it up, put their names on it, sorry, taking notes in the Bible, look at all this stuff, this is great, I'm doing great, right? right, all this stuff, right? I even had one woman, this woman, I had a woman in class, she got teaching the course, it was an IT course that a real, wonderful company used to work for, this woman's right in front of me, she brought with her three post-it note colors, red, yellow, green. She had two different colored pens, black and red. When she went through the cut, she would mark up whether, and I said, like, what are you doing? She said, well, write up things that are important to me. And I my friends, the yellow, not quite sure. So I put a yellow in this song. I was like, oh my God, you are unbelievable. <laughs> she was the most amazing student I'd ever had in my entire life. She goes, you know, so the class ends, fifth day ends, she walks out, leaves her mind. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. So I whoop it up. I run down the hall and I said, man, Mara did her name. Mara, Mara, you forgot your body. This is what she said. No, I didn't. Like, uh, uh, yeah, you did. I'm holding it. So no, 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 I didn't. I just left it there because I don't need it now. It's like, wow, she said, well, actually, it doesn't work with what I do. Right? So, class, stunning. That binder made it through the, it, it helped her make it through the red. But she was going where? To the green. She was going to be competent. She was going out in the workflow, and that wonderful marked up thing she realized in that environment was not going to help her. And she left it behind. Right? And that's not enough. How many of you work for companies that change ever? You have change in your world? Competent change. I'm speaking to you folks. The rest of you is relaxed. So, Remaining so, sustaining. I once taught Lotus 1, 2, 3, release 1A. <laughs> They're on the room. All the, all the younger people are going, What's the uh, water? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> flower? <laughs> Just to help you out, it was a precursor to Excel. Release 1A. If you put more than nine numbers in it, wrote a formula, you ran out of memory. Didn't do anything else. <laughs> But I taught, I taught that course for two and a half years. I taught that course for two and a half years. The word upgrade was not in our vocabulary. I thought I'd be teaching it today. That was 1985. 1985. Right? We live now, folks, in a world of sustaining and remaining competent. Not becoming such. My dad ran a YMCA for 35 years. He said, frankly, Bob, this is, when I walked in 35 years ago, it's kind of like running a Y. 35 years later, Eh, it's still kind of like running a Y, right? He changed a bit and learned stuff, but he said, you know, it's kind of like an 80-20 thing for me. That is not the world anymore, friends. It's 2080. So if I can make you competent, if I can snap a finger and come up with that magic formula, next Monday, if you didn't get the memo, you are no longer so. So even if, you guys, even if we're stunning at it, even if stunning at competency, remaining so is the challenge nowadays. Make sense? So my question, friends, is, well, how are you doing on your colors? With the stuff that you make, the things that you build, the things that you give to your learners every day, what, where do they fall in that journey? Here was a major pivot for me 10 years ago. I stopped building left to right and started building right to left. Get it? Stop building left to right, which is how we do it. This way. If time, maybe. Start building here and then go back that way and see what you do. Interesting challenge. You'll be surprised how and what you will build if you build for sustainment first. Now, my trainers in the room, before you get mad at me, I'm looking around at you. Love you all. I want one too. I had a person walk up to me at a conference and say, Bob, I, oh, I, I, I know you. I've read your stuff. Uh, I, uh, you're the classroom hater guy. <laughs> so I was like, what the what? You're, yeah, yeah, you're the guy that hates the classroom. I read your stuff. You hate the classroom. I said, I don't hate the classroom. He goes, yeah, you do. I said, well, I've never written or said those words out of my mouth. He goes, well, if you read your stuff, <laughs> you hate the class. I said, okay, wait, 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 wait. I said, okay, here. First, if that's what you thought, I'm sorry because I don't. I think the classroom is one of the most stunning, most precious learning modalities we have today. I really do. Here's what I hate is what we've done to the classroom. The thousand slides. <coughs> that is a bad learning modality, but that ain't the fault of the classroom, that's the fault of the design. I love the classroom, I hate what we burden it with. I hate how piled on it gets. It's so unfair to put these people through two, three, four days of anything because they were cognitively done at lunch on day two. But we keep them three more, thinking something miraculous will happen. 
<laughs> it doesn't. Guys. It just doesn't. If you're doing cognitive research at all, look at this stuff. They, they are done. They are done. No matter what you say or do or how creative, fun, or innovative your classroom is, they are cognitively done. Let them go. <laughs> Please let them go. For their own sake, let them go. Right? So we've got to tackle this a bit. So there's your 70 20 10, friends, if you want to lay the stuff over. <coughs> but we got to arrive at three things then. First of all, then clearly we need a new approach to the traditional. That, I think that's what we're talking about. Secondly, blending. Oh my gosh. You guys ever heard of blended learning? Yeah. It's not. I looked at your stuff. It's not. I did a year and a half study on blended learning. Well over 90% of it was blended training, not blended learning. There are, blended learning covers this. Blended training mixes up the red stuff. Like instead of five days of training, let's do two. And let's put e-learning around it. Yeah, let's do it. That's blended training, friends. You're, you're, you're just moving the chairs around the deck of Titanic. Right? It's, you're, you're, still, you're still just monkeying with training. Sequence doesn't mean blended, right? We got to figure out a different way to blend beyond the one thing we really have today, even though we just mix it around. And lastly, oh my gosh, this could be days. This could be days. This last bullet. But here's my, not homework assignment, but warning number, what am I on? Five or six. If you don't have a governance and maintenance strategy, you are dead in the water with this discipline. You'll never get beyond 10. You'll never get beyond 10. Because when I'm out in the battlefield dodging bullets, if the thing I pick up to reference is old or wrong, mm -hmm. thank you, literally. Mm -hmm. Right? People will put up with a bad class, friends. People will put up with a bad trainer. People will put up with this. OK, guys, on page 9 of your workbook, uh, that's wrong. Sorry, software has changed since we wrote this. But I got a new page for you. You ever heard this before? Gone through that before, right? They will, they, it's fine. They will not put up with that when they're out in the workflow trying to handle an aggressive or mad customer, and the thing you handed them to reference is from 1865. <laughs> they won't. This is hard. This is really hard because our current strategies of governance and maintenance do not work. They're a 10 based model. They're, they're, they're based on keeping 10 stuff current, not 20 and 70. And here comes the one that will blow you away. You can't do it on your own anymore. You're going to need the help of the learners. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, you're going to have children. <laughs> it's a lot like that. <laughs> it's a lot like parenting, just to give you an idea. We spent a month and a half on this, pro on this bullet when we do our consulting work. A month and a half on governance and maintenance. Because it's so hard, because I am no longer going to write a book I'm going to use these cool things I find amongst you. And guess who made them? You probably made affable. Mm -hmm. Remember that learning asset analysis I talked about? That wasn't for fun. That was to gather stuff you're going to use in the green. You're going to orchestrate it in the green. You're going to structure it in the green. But I'm not going to make or, or curate any of it or, or maintain it. Why would I? You made it, and it's stunning. Why would I take it from you? And by the way, they're happy to give it to you. Really happy to give it to you and get it off their shoulders. But no. No. So, oh my gosh, you guys. You'll see it one other time in my slides, but it's an entire workshop on governance and maintenance. So, there it is again, right? Right? Here's the secret sauce. That. Been around since 1991, formula. But it's not a 3 by 5 laminated job aid. Just clarifying. Right? No more is a classroom, a whiteboard. Right? Formal instructions on a whiteboard. Formal instructions in orchestration of parts, pieces, desks, trainers, books, the whole deal, right? So is performance support. It was never meant to be a one-hit wonder. Right? We're going to get way deep into this in a second. Watch this exciting part, though, you guys. See that slide? I want you to watch. Three things are going to change about it. Three things. Ready? There. There. See? Here. Training model first. Right to left. Performance support model first. Right, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Left to right. Ignore what I said earlier. Performance support model, right to left. Build for the green. Clean up with the red. What three things change, friends? What three things? Yeah, thank you for picking that first. You are the, one of the few people who's ever done that. Most people obsess on that red thing. But it's what we do. <laughs> My God, that's 
No. Right? No. Right. Guys, we are in this business. Oh, gosh darn it. We are in this business. We're in the competency business, not the training business, not the mastery. We are in the competency business. Look at that. On average, it goes down by half. We've measured it. Time to competency on average goes down by half with performance support. What else has got different? Training time. Yeah, the training went down. Yeah, the red, you can say it. It's okay. <laughs> the red went down by half. Right? Wait till you see that thousand slide course at the end of this presentation. You're going to be blown away by what happened to that thing when we looked at it from right to left. Remarkably different. Unimaginably different. Right? And by the way, trainers, you're okay. You're still okay. You are incredibly important. The, that half class time thing, you'll have more work than you can ever do. I've never seen this model put a trainer out of business. In fact, I've seen it make them way busier than they are now. And seen and valued very differently. One last thing. Yeah, look at the green. Question mark, no clue, books, dust. Right? It's intentional as the red, right? It's systemic, measurable, scalable, all those things. But to do it, we have to have a method. So, five moments of need. Who's heard this stuff? Who's heard the five moments? Good for you. Yeah. So, I was at Microsoft. Uh, I was the chief learning evangelist at Microsoft under Bill and Steve, Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer for three years in a row. Interesting for you in my life. It was when we came out with Vista, I should say. Oh, wow. Fun time to be at Microsoft. Vista, the first possible thing they ever made. Open source was coming out. Another fun thing when you're at Microsoft. Oh, my God. So I was there, and I was asked to build blended learning. And I did it. One year, not bad. Big budget. Really smart people, PhDs in my team. I'm not. They were just brilliant. Released it, 26% adoption. That's bad. Really, really bad. Across 9 million texts, 26% adoption. Huge investment, year of stuff, PhDs. Important people were not happy, right? They said, fix it. So I went back and got my now partner, Dr. Conrad Gofferson, in a room. I said, come look at my stuff. And he said, Bob, here's the thing. This is the most stunning thing I've ever seen designed. This is, this is like award-winning stuff. I was like, well, well, thank you, but it's only getting 26%. He said, oh, that's, that's all right. I, I said, it's award-winning. No one will ever use it. <laughs> what? He goes, he goes, Bob, here's the thing. You pivoted on, here comes the word, content, not context. You don't understand the need of the person consuming this. And the needs you chose, they are not in right now. They're experienced, vested text. I wrote a moments one and two course. They were not new and more. They got the certificates, could cover a wall with them. They were struggling with these three things. I remember, keep up and get out of trouble. They were in the world of upgrades. They didn't need 101, but I wrote a 101 upgrade course, which is embarrassing, right? So five moments. Now, here's the problem. I had a person walk up to me in a conference a couple years back and said, oh, about most, the five moments, love it, we're doing it, working on it really hard. I said, great, how's it coming? Well, we're working on one and two. What happens when you number things? <laughs> yeah, people, it implies order, friends. It also implies something else. Yeah, everyone wants to be number one. No one wants to be number five. <laughs> right? Right? And so, not innocently, we did this. Could it break some up and the line was cool and all this kind of stuff? It is not the methodology, though. Friends, this is the methodology. We went out and asked learners what a concept. We said, look, when you are in the workflow, here's the five moments. Do you agree? Oh, yeah, I go through them all the time. All the time. Which one is the most important to you? Guess what they picked? Apply. That is the bullseye, friends, every day. Learners come in every day trying to apply. Now, in the context of that, they do new and more stuff. They get out of, they get in trouble. They got to keep up with missing the memos. Right? But the five moments is this one. So, again, Design for apply first. Design for apply first. And the only way you can do that is if you understand what apply means. What is the context? And just because I gotta show it, there's 7.20.10 again. I can't show it anymore. But that's where it lays. 
the guys. I can design for that. Not the numbers. I can design for that schematic. Certain things, one need may be higher than others, but I can ask those questions. I can design an experience that pivots on that. Not order, sequence, chunking, Ooh. We're going to get to that in a minute, but not, that's not my goal any longer. So, how do we cover the 90? God bless this woman. Does anyone know Gloria Geary? I'm sure you do. I love this woman. I was an avid follower when Gloria used to run these conferences. She left this, by the way, and she started helping um, babies in China get out of work. She wrote this in 1991. 1991. Some of you weren't around in 1991. Or you were younger. I'm not going to ask you how young you might have been. I was not such. But look at that. So do this at your table for a second, would you? Read that definition and pick your favorite word. At your table. Read that definition and pick your favorite words. Go. Yeah, one minute. not a learning person. She was a numbers person. She was a COO of a company. She was all about operations. What She said, I do not want two people doing one person's job. Coaching, mentoring, cute. <laughs> cute. <laughs> like it. Avoid it at all costs. Because it costs us money. It might be great, but when you're helping him, or everybody for, that I'm paying you to do one thing. So if you can come up with something that minimally, she didn't say never, but it involves minimal, another one, I want an enabled learner, an empowered learner, a self-discovery learner, not a dependent, can I get, you got five minute learner. Bill, remember Bill. <coughs> Bad. There's one other word that I as a designer love. Love. Take it out of this paragraph and read it. Is it a different paragraph without that word? It's SharePoint, friends. As a Microsoft employee, I apologize for SharePoint. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, orchestrated, because it's, it's what we do. We orchestrate information, don't we? Whether we train it, you learn it, whatever, we are in the orchestration business. And what Gloria was telling us way back in 91, this can be designed, is what she's saying. You don't orchestrate it. It's terrifying. It was terrifying in 91. It's way worse now. Because we have a lot of stuff. Tons of stuff. You ask any learner what they want in the world right now, they'll tell you, calm. Help me through the storm. Don't give me one more anything. Give me less stuff. No more SharePoint sites. No I don't want another app on my phone. Take 10 off my phone. Take down six SharePoint sites. Then I'll, I'll try to be productive. So let's get into orchestrate. In the smart search engine, oh. the ones that are left. Search. So, look at that stuff. Remember the ask analysis I told you about? This is a list that Con and I keep from the companies we visited over the last 10 years. It's not an exclusive list. I'm sorry, it's not a, 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 a inclusive. Is that the right word? Inclusive. Inclusive, thank you. Right? But it's the, it's the things we see all the time. These are the tools of the trade. How do you feel as a learner? Oh, good Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the answer's up there somewhere. Right? But here's what I hear all the time. But, Bob, they're adults. They will choose wisely. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> not. No. They absolutely do not. Get rid of a word called metacognition. Yeah. Right? My ability to problem solve, basically, to oversimplify the definition. Maggie Martinez. BYU University got her PhD in this idea that adults are not self-enabled. In fact, in her research, over 70% have no clue how to attack a learning problem. They go by proximity and familiarity. Proximity and familiarity. That doesn't mean the thing that's either of those is good or correct. Right? We need to orchestrate these assets into a meaningful way. So, and give you a high level orchestration and finish my last half hour with the details. Moment of need, right? There's five, correct? What are they? Good, yeah, that was all. You, you could have looked it up, by the way. <laughs> I love you asking that question because this is what y'all did. Uh, <laughs> and it's always written on the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> You're, you're allowed to look it up in the job aid. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when I'm in these first two, you guys, who can finish this sentence for me? You all read it. In this lesson. You uh, are <laughs> wonderful. Right. You've read it a thousand times. That is a Megarian learning objective. Robert Mager, love the man, one of my other heroes in this business. Robert Mager, he gave us the Megarian learning objective, right? So we do this. In this lesson, you will learn when we are teaching because they don't get it. They do not have context often, particularly in new. It's new. Then we go to some concepts. We go deeper into details. We do steps. We practice. We assess. And we repeat. Sound familiar? That is a well-orchestrated lesson. Here's the problem. We get down here. It stinks. Mm -hmm. It stinks. Who knows a guy named Captain Sully? Yeah. What did he do? He landed a plane on the Hudson. Not bad. Anyone know how long he had? Just over two minutes. From bird to water, just over two minutes. And part of that had to be this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, there's something here? <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm down to what? A minute 90. I go, what I got left? Right? Right? Did he want this? In this lesson, you will learn. No, he didn't want to, he didn't want to take e learning. He didn't want to log out of the LMS. Do you want to get in the microphone? Hey, we have a problem up here. Anyone in the back ever land up playing with no thrust? Come forward. We're forming a user group. <laughs> He's talking about mentoring. Some no, no, folks. He did not. And every pilot will tell you. Do you hear a pilot? Every pilot will tell you they're not trained in every possible scenario. They're trained on how to get out of every possible scenario based on flight principles that have happened thousands of times in the history of flight. Right? They're taught. This, they invert the pyramid. The orchestration of performance support is the inversion of the orchestration of instruction. It is a minimalist model, friends. It starts at the very tip of the problem, the context in which the barista is trying to get out of. 
the workflow. That's what they pivot on, not the outline. And then they go deeper into the pyramid into higher levels of support. And we use the pyramid metaphor for two reasons. The deeper you get friends in the layers, the more robust the resource gets, but also the longer it takes to consume. And the workflow, friends, is a world of brevity, not one of time. No one has it anymore if they ever did. 20 minute e-learnings. Good luck with that one. No one's got 20 minutes. Well, I got I've chunked it down to five. No one's got five, friends. No, they just don't, right? They want real quick after context, quick steps, details, get me going and out. Job aid like stuff. But if it's not enough, I may need some abouts. See the next level? Sometimes folks' job aids fail if they're designed well because they never come with a lot of detail. They're a job aid. So I'm going through the steps going, well, I could do these, but I have no idea what that means. I'm flying blind. I could sit in that aircraft and pull out the thing that he, by the way, you don't know, he pulled out a job aid and landed that plane by following steps. He didn't go, well, let's wing this. No, he literally got a, he was taught to go in that big black thing they carry in the front when they walk in there. And he pulled out a job aid, stuck it on the yoke, and went through the steps to not die. Right? Now he had some experience. He was a 30-year pilot. I'm not. So I can go through the steps, you guys. We're dying. We are dying. <laughs> if, you, if we're on a plane and you give me the 20 steps, I can go through them to the what we're going to die and crack. Because I don't have the supporting knowledge with which to perform. That's why a lot of job aids fail. Not because they're not good or well written or have the steps. The learner doesn't have the understanding to perform them. And if you put them in there, now you have a book, not a job aid. If this isn't enough, look at all we got today. This is why my mom wishes she was with us. You got all these layers, reference stuff, learning stuff, look, people stuff. Remember, minimal support from others. They're still there, but they are last because they're expensive, hard to keep current, and they're rarely around when I want them. They just are, folks. That's what people are like. They're doing their work somewhere else. A lot of them are unconsciously incompetent. They didn't get the memo. So they were correct on Friday, they can't perform on Monday because the rules changed and I just didn't get it. Make sense? They're so hard to scale. Put 10 coaches in 10 different rooms. Do this. If your coaches, your, your star stud coaches, your top 1%, put them in 10 different rooms, give them all the same problem and ask them how to solve it, you will get 10 different answers. In 10 different time frames, 10 different scenarios, 10 different examples, right? Nope, I want to, I want to minimize the use of this until it has to be, I'm going to put everything else on top of it. Because I can control the layers above. I can orchestrate them. I can, I can keep them current. I can make them designed well. I, that last one's the variable. It's tough. So, how do we make that? These you've got. Remember when you do your asset analysis? You can run to your asset analysis and collect all the stuff you see out in the world. That is the bottom rank. And you put them in these rows. I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to show you an example. But those you don't typically make. This you got to build. You, rare, you don't find a lot of these, candidly. You find a lot of this stuff down here. So, look at this example. See this? Let me show you one. This is not your handout. And my friend, I need that get off there for a second. emerging friends that are really good at making these triangles. So I just want to share with you some that we're watching right now. Now these are not in your slides, I apologize. This was totally my fault. Um, when I sent you the printed copy, I got rid of the slide by accident. So I'll be sure to send it to you. And again, I, again, this is not an exhaustive list. These are just ones that we, I frankly like a lot. Adaptive learning goes along, this goes the rock, whole deal, goes with the players. Uh, learning content managers, real ones, not the old ones. Are, these three are very good. In workflow embedded, these are some of the top players. In software embedded, this is not software, this is workflow. Software embedded, and then last, this whole new thing called personal resource management and greeting others. These, these are the emerging tools of building triangles. This whole right side, this is the 10, see the color? Look at this. This is the you guys. This is the new domain of our trade. I build the purple stuff first, based on context, and then I still do some of those with what's necessary. So, 
Let's talk about the what's necessary part. Three important trends. Do you believe our responsibility is not only to provide the right content, but also that in the right context? So we have to get better at doing that, defining and illustrating what the context is. We're going to do that in a minute. Next, do you believe the workflow is the most powerful learning environment? Right? Yes. You all voted for four and six. Right? So guess what? We have to have a methodology, love that word, methodology, and tools to enable the workflow then. Learning in the workflow. And last, not all things that were best learned in the workflow. And we have to have a way to decide and don't ask your SMEs. Because they will tell you what? They, everything's important. I hate that word. We're not talking about importance here. We're talking about best place to learn. It's all important. We're not arguing that. They love pivoting on that word. It's not about important. It, we wouldn't teach it or put it in the outline if it wasn't important. What I'm trying to decide is, I can't do a thousand slides in five days. I've got to have a systemic, defendable way to vet that. And I can't get some in a room and have them yell at each other and vote that way. <laughs> so we're going to get to those things. Rapid workflow analysis, critical skills, and a lead. The brain. Two parts. What's that? We take stuff in there, right? Where do we hope things go? Long term. Long term memory. How do you get them there? You encode them. Get this years of stuff before? We're not good at this. I've learned. I know I wasn't. We're terrible at encoding. Learners try and they struggle. You're trying right now, frankly. You're always constantly trying to encode. So that you can retreat. But here's the thing. What if I taught you in a way that was different than the way you went back to work. I, I, enco I encoded the way I construct. You go back to decipher it. How do you think you do? Do you all know that? Right? How many letters? How many letters? Any alphabet? 26. <laughs> yeah. Any groups? Vowels and consonants. Right. Every word in our language has what? Oh, wow, I guess you get this stuff. Right? This is great. So here's the thing. You learned it poorly. Probably through a song. That's why every five-year-old thinks elemental P is a letter. Because <laughs> it gets a B, like all the rest of them do. Right? So I'm going to teach you a better way. If you take the alphabet you know and you go every third letter backwards, you would retain it better. So what's the thing after F? Go. No, no, no. See, third letter. Okay, good. Then, we, then go back to the. How are you doing? Really badly. <laughs> really badly. Why? Because, folks, I screwed up the encoding. I didn't screw up the alphabet. The alphabet's still the alphabet. Still 26 letters, still make up words, still vowels and consonants. I screwed up your encoding. There was no, by the way, rhyme or reason to ABCD stuff. It had nothing to do with spelling or anything else. It was an order we picked. So I, I decoded it for you, and you did badly. Well, look at these two things, friends. This is for the exact same course. The exact same course for managers in the field running a shipping department. This is exact, any difference between the thing on the right and the left? Order. What do you mean order? What, what's different between those two things? on the right? Their day. What they do every single day from 8 o'clock and 5 as a manager. Right? What's the thing on the left? All those same things, not in that order. So guess what, friends? I stopped saying these words. You ever start these words as a trainer? Let's go over the outline before we start the course. Turn to page 2-9. Let's go through the outline and talk about what we're going to learn in the next two days. Stop doing that. First of all, no one remembers it. They don't remember it, friends. They just don't. It's gone by 10 o'clock. It just is. But secondly, they're lousy encoders in most books because they're this. That's what Eddie taught us. Group by subjects. Simple to complex. That's not the workflow. This was the workflow. So when they got out there, they could not decode and apply. Four-week course. Flew them into Atlanta. Four weeks off the field. Hotels. Meals. All the district managers went back. I can't tell you how many couldn't do it. Couldn't do it because we did not encode with the workflow. 
So friends, when you go out and start designing for the green, the green is the workflow, not the red. This is the red. No, nope. that's going to become my outline of what I build. And I might teach some of it. We'll talk about that in a minute. But th that's not my outline to teach. This is my outline to build for, and I'm going to build triangles and green stuff first. Make sense? How do you do it? Workflow is made up of tasks that make processes that are supported by steps. So you start with tasks. You sit down with your folks and say, let's fill this whiteboard with all the things you do between 9 and 5 based on this objective. Nagarian, oh, there he is, objective. I don't care about sequence. I don't care about order. I don't care about just start saying what you do. Here's the problem, folks. If you start doing order, if you start doing, it gets slow, really slow, because they cognitively can't do it. You ever tried to juggle? Everyone ever been taught to juggle? You know what you start with? One ball. One ball. I went to juggling class once. They gave me a ball. And they were like, go up, and I was like, really? <laughs> really? Like, yeah, really. I said, no, no, I want to do, no. Until you can catch that one ball up and down, no, 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 give me two. So guess what? I was doing great. Great. They gave me a second ball. Guess what? Couldn't catch a one. Why? Because I was juggling two things. Cognitively, before I was prepared to have mastered the first. Make sense? If you, when you're doing your tasks, just get them down. They'll also say these things. Oh, 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 wow, that third thing. Oh, that is something. They have to understand a lot to do that. Okay, that, oh, the whole conversation just changed, didn't it? Did I just say a task? What word did I use? Understand. understand. I'm not there yet. I'll get to understand in a minute. But they want to tell you because, oh, there's just so, no, that, don't, don't, don't. Get that later. We've got to get what the workflow is like. I get you have to know stuff to do it. But let's get it down first so we know what it is to then talk about the stuff you need to know. That thousand course by course, you guys, when we RWA'd it, this is called Rapid Workflow Analysis, we found 14 things that killed people that were not in the course. 14 things. They never made the outline. The SMEs never thought of them. It's terrifying. Let alone a thousand slides. <laughs> right? Process steps. So, let me show you one. This is from a hospital. You guys know chunking, by the way? You guys know chunking? Seven plus or minus? Okay. So there's six, very nice, chunk well, six tasks. There they are, all verbs, because they are performed. Here's the steps to the top one, the one in white. You group them all together, you restrain a patient. All verbs, all doing. I haven't worried about it. chapter, verse, lesson, e-learning. I'm not touching modality yet. I'm still analyzing context. That's why I screwed up at Microsoft. I went to sneeze about the technology never went to the field to the test. That's where this came from. This was done through RWA, Rapid Workflow Analysis. Those are the process groups of which tasks are beneath. Critical skills. Ever been here? What is it? Trafalgar Square. Quick story. Dear friend of mine. Loves books. Loves, loves books. Loves them. He's also a PhD in Instructional Technology and Psychology. Saw these books. Look at this one. That terrifies me. <laughs> that outfit terrifies me. Right? But look, look, look at some of these titles. Really? In a weekend. With a book. He bought 16 of them. There were 16 books. He bought all of them. He bought all 16 books. Because he couldn't believe someone had cracked the code that you could master these things in a weekend with a book. Flying home to Salt Lake. Always wanted to scuba dive. Got the book out and started reading, thinking, okay, I got a 10 hour flight. By the time I land, I can be a scuba. <laughs> <laughs> Starts reading, sees that word. Hmm. Wait a minute. Trauma. Borrow trauma. Sounds bad. <laughs> sounds bad. Looks it up. Nah, it still sounds bad. No idea. Right? The power of definitions. Oh my lord. And then he read these words. And he went, oh, oh, oh. Oh. And he said, Bob, I closed the book. <laughs> it was a great book. Pretty pictures of fish. But I closed the book and said, you know, maybe I won't learn everything I need to know about scuba diving with this one. Probably a lot of good stuff in there. Probably everything to scuba dive is in that book. But learning to do it. No. 
and Khan invented to this day, in my 35 years of instruction, the most powerful instructional tool I've ever used to build true 72010 stuff. It's called the Critical Skills Analysis Rubric. Because what Khan realized is in all of his years of doing Addy, and all of his years of doing analysis, he never asked these questions. By the way, we just roll this stuff down. We've got to decide where it's best to learn it. Let's pivot on failure. Not importance, not order, not advanced, intermediate, beginner. These words sound familiar? I said, no, no, I, I used to feel almost forever. I want to pivot on if you screw up, what happens to you? And he came up with this rubric. A brilliant one through seven. I've used this for leadership. I've used it for software. I've used it for product training. I've used it for sales instruction. I've used it for executive coaching. Because everything is performed. All those things that you said are performed. Right? Look at a one. Consequences, then, you see them in your hand out there? Yeah, look at a seven. Bad. Look at the word above, catastrophic. Right? Right? And then you simply do this, friends. You take your outline that you made from your task, from your, from your RWA, at the task level, and say, look, Eric, if someone screws up at this, what's the number? I don't want to hear importance. I don't want to hear it's your favorite. I, I just want to find out. You didn't use this, don't. I don't want to use those words. Defend the number you picked for me, and you give every task a number. If it's less than a four, you're not teaching it. Well, but Bob, it's in the outline. I know it's in the outline. That means it's in the workflow. You all said earlier the best place to learn is in the workflow. So I'm going to put it in this powerful tool like you saw a minute ago for requisition. It was all in there. I'm going to teach you how to use the tool, and when you screw up, because you're going to, you're going to find your way out of it and not hurt someone. And guess what? You will emerge a much stronger learner than you were when you started, and there's nothing I can do to touch that. That's stunning instruction. With support, it's stunning instruction. Five or higher, ain't doing it. I'm not doing it. If it's a five or higher, I'm not going to let you fail and learn. Sully with a plane. Mmm, wow. I fly a lot. A lot. I, I don't know if I ever sit in a plane and hear a pilot get on and go, oh, I'm excited about this flight. I'm going to try some cool stuff. <laughs> I, I read about this cool thing. And we're at 3,000 feet. We're, no, I know. No, 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 no. Right? You practice that elsewhere. Right? You just, here's the thing, you guys. Remember that death course I talked about earlier? Wait till you see how many less than fours there were. By the standard of failure, less than four is there were, versus five through seven. So watch this outline, you guys, look at this outline. This is an outline, it's RWA, this is a sales outline for sales training. Groups by black, see the black, sell to a customer. There's the workflow, you read the black. The steps are beneath each with supporting knowledge in the goal. I've done my RWA, I've got all my chunks. If I taught it, it was about three to six days of instruction. But I'm not teaching it all, right? Because the best place to learn is in the workflow. When we critical skill this, look at this, you guys. That's what came up with. This was the course before. This was the course after CSA. Fives or higher. Everything that ain't there, I'm not teaching. I'll show you how to find it. I'll give you a stunning triangle and tool to get there. I'll teach you how to do that through scenarios and practice and all that stuff. But I'm not teaching uh, follow up with a customer. You can probably learn that or do that through the steps provided, or maybe screw it up, but not a second or a third time. You'll probably learn it, but that's not a great thing. But you're not firing it if you do it badly. Make sense? Mm -hmm. That stuff I'm teaching you. Because in this organization, those were five or higher. Learning experience and performance planning, guys. This is my quickest slide because it's kind of a hard thing to grasp right now. But all I want to show is that there is a way to put these, oh, sorry, there's a way to put these things into the experience, both formal and informal, based on your numbers, your critical skills. It's called a leap. You can read it in the slide. But I'm really punching it lightly because it's right now for you a two, three, or a one. Your fours or fives are the things I've shown you earlier. But it is the wrapper when you get there. Is that fair? That's as deep as I'm going, because if I go here, we go deep, deep, deep. And you're not ready. Want to see what happens? Look at this. Ready? Look at this course. A thousand slides. Drum roll. 
that general gave the people that a really good, well-designed, in the field, performance support tool. So, what would that look It was a kind of, I can't really tell you. <laughs> but it was a, it was a, it was a blend of digital and paper. Is what I can tell you. Um, but you guys in class, they were dodging bullets all the time. They were, we were, we were, we got them near death without dying, right? And then we helped, we watched them pull themselves out of it, right? Because that was what was going to happen. Shipping a harbor is safe, but you know what? That's not what ships were built for. <laughs> it was 1984. I was a fourth grade teacher in Warsaw, New York. I was two years out of college. I just finished my master's. I'd written my thesis on how to incorporate, this is 1984, how to incorporate Apple IIEs into the K-12 curriculum in New York State. We were not using them for that. They were things you sent kids to do when they had nothing else to do. Got an A. Proud of myself. Took it before my school board because my principal loved it. He said, look, why don't you do that for a job? I was like, oh my god, really? He said, yes. We're going to take you out of the classroom. You're going to be the district coordinator for that thesis thing you wrote. It's amazing. We just got to get it to the board, and then you're going to do it. Guys, I was like, I was there at 24 years old. I, right? Took it before the school board, did my PowerPoint, which by then was these plastic laminate things. No that we put on a thing and then the light shined through and projected them up out of the, that was PowerPoint. Oh, I go, younger people. I did my whole PowerPoint slide. Same time, look at my principal. He's like, oh. he's like, I'm eating a whole run. You're great, the whole deal. And then the board says this, ah, this is great, but we'll, we'll discuss it in private session. Then we come back, we'll talk to you about it. When a board says that, it's the beginning of it not going really well. <laughs> so off they went. A couple more people presented. They came back after an a half an hour and stuff. They said literally these words: "Bob, Bob, Bob, stand up." Yeah. You know, they're they're public forums. There's parents there, that kind of stuff. Every, it was a, oh God, it's a Bob, Bob. We we need more teachers like you. My God, your energy. This is great. And by the way, oh my God, we're, this is amazing. It's in our five-year plan. <laughs> <laughs> People laughing know what that means. Duh. It will never, ever, ever be done. And I was, in my 20, 35 years of being a professional with this, I had never been as devastated. Never gone from so high to so low. Went home, furious, broke things, yelled, cried, literally. Called my mom. Because my mother is a two school teacher, too. <laughs> At the time, she's a 28 year old, 28 year school teacher. I'm a two. And I, she, she hears Susie, I hear her voice. I just spew, I mean, I just spew venom at her for any, I mean, you know, just being a good mom. She's like, oh, okay, oh are you done? Oh, oh no, okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> and I would help go on. I mean, I'm like, oh, no, the whole thing. And finally, after the whole deal, I get done, she's, and she says these words. Okay, look, which do you want? The mom answer or the <laughs> colleague answer? I'm like, but kind of like the mom answer. She says, well, sweetheart, my God, you're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> my God, you're amazing. I, I, you're the most incredible son I have ever, I could ever imagine. I'm so proud of you. They are wrong. You are right. <laughs> like, okay. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to hear the colleague answer. She says, okay, you're already ready. I said, yes. She goes, okay, here's the thing. I hate teachers like you. <laughs> and I'm like, Mom, you want to go here? Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here, son. Son, from a 28 year old veteran to a two year old rookie, your enthusiasm is brilliant. Your energy is tremendous. I, I don't have any more. I admire that. But here's what you don't get about instruction. And then she said these words although there will be revolutionary technology, methodology, and instruction, they'll only be adopted in an evolutionary way. You tried to revolutionize Warsaw Elementary School with a deck of PowerPoints. And the horse bucked. And guess what, Bob? You gotta quit the district. And I was like, Mom, you, Bob, if you wanna do that job, you gotta quit the district because you blew your chance. They're never going back. That five-year plan is the five-year plan. They're not rescinding it. You're not, you'll never do that job, and I quit the district. I went to another one. So friends, friends, friends. We talked about some cool stuff. Right? Revolutionary stuff. But it will only ever sink in. You'll only ever do it. Your learners will only ever take it. They'll only stop asking for five days or whatever if you allow it to evolve in your enterprise. That's the good news. Right? You've got time, inch by inch, life to sense. Greatest quote from Charlotte Webb. Right? So 
I'm glad you're excited. I hope you, you hope it helped. But but the good news is, deep breaths. Right. Take it one thing.